The island of Sodor is surrounded by beautiful blue sea. It has fields of green and sandy yellow beaches. There are rivers, streams and lots of trees where the birds sing. There are windmills and a coal mine and docks where visitors to the island arrive. The island also has lots and lots of railway lines. Who's that puffing down the track? It's Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the island of Sodor. All the engines on the island of Sodor look forward to Harvest Festival time. But most of all, they look forward to the Fat Controller's Harvest Firework display. The Fat Controller came to see Thomas and James. James, you are to collect the fireworks from the depot. James was overjoyed. Thomas wasn't happy at all. But I wanted to collect the fireworks, Thomas pouted. The Fat Controller chose me because I'm as red as a rocket and twice as grand. James steamed proudly across the countryside. Bright as the best, bright as the best, he hummed happily to himself. He was having a wonderful day. Thomas was still upset when he arrived at the shunting yards. Bother, James, he grouched, and he biffed the trucks crossly around the yard. When James arrived at the depot, he was very excited. The wagons were all ready for him, filled safely to the top with fireworks. James was coupled up with the precious cargo and he steamed away. Thomas shunted the last truck crossly into place. The trucks were glad that job was finished. James happily steamed along. He was thinking about the fireworks. He was imagining all the sparkles, flashes and shooting stars when suddenly James ground to a halt. I will have to go and call for help, said his driver. Thomas puffed back into Knapford Station as Gordon was letting off his passengers. Children and grown-ups from all over the island had come to see the fireworks. Seeing the children cheered Thomas up, but the Fat Controller looked concerned. James is broken down, he said. You must collect him, Thomas, and bring him back, or the firework display will be cancelled. Oh, no, cried Thomas. Then all the children will be sad. And he set off to collect James. Thomas puffed across the countryside. Even with his light on, Thomas knew he had to be very careful. Thomas found James broken down on the track. Hello, busted boiler, teased Thomas. You don't look very useful now. James was upset. But when Thomas got behind James, he couldn't see ahead. You will have to look out for me, said Thomas. But James was cross. You said I wasn't useful, he pouted. But if the fireworks don't get to Knapford Station, puffed Thomas, the display will be cancelled. James didn't want the children to be sad, so he agreed to look out for Thomas. And they set off together.
When the track was straight and clear, James called out, Go faster! And Thomas did. Soon they were working happily together and making good time. The Fat Controller checked his watch. There was still no sign of Thomas or James. It's very late, he thought. It's almost the children's bedtime. Even Gordon was worried. I'll have to control the display, said the Fat Controller. So the disappointed children started to board the coaches. At last they could see the signal lights. The signal had turned red. Thomas and James stopped. Why would the signal be red? Maybe a passenger train is coming through, puffed Thomas. Gordon must be taking the children back cried James. Thomas and James were very upset. We're here, they cried, and sounded their whistles as loudly as they could. But no one could hear them. The children were all on board. Gordon was ready to depart. Then Thomas had a bright idea. Send up a rocket, he told his driver. So his driver carefully lit a rocket. He stood well back as it whooshed into the sky. The rocket burst into stars. A sparkling dragon, cried the Fat Controller. It must be Thomas and James. Stop, Gordon, he said. The firework display is back on. The junction signal turned to green and Thomas and James were soon on their way. James and Thomas were soon at the station. The children cheered. Good work, Thomas, cried James happily. And good work, James, agreed Thomas. Good work, both of you, said the Fat Controller. That night, Thomas and James watched the fireworks together. I think we are both useful engines, said James proudly. But we are most useful when we work together, puffed Thomas. The island of Sodor is surrounded by beautiful blue sea. It has fields of green and sandy yellow beaches. There are rivers, streams and lots of trees where the birds sing. There are windmills and a coal mine and docks where visitors to the island arrive. The island also has lots and lots of railway lines. Who's that? puffing down the track. It's Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the island of Sodor. It was winter 
A thick blanket of snow lay over the island of Sodor. All the engines were busy carrying passengers and goods from station to station. Sometimes they need to warn people they are coming. So steam engines blow their whistles. And diesel engines sound their electric horns. One day, Percy took some trucks to the smelter's yard. He whistled hello to Harry and Bert. But Harry and Bert laughed. Call that a whistle, chortled Bert. Just listen to this. Diesels can do everything better than steamies, they sneered. My whistle's as good as your horns, puffed Percy crossly. Just you wait and see. Percy practised loud whistling. He blew louder and louder and louder. At last, he was ready to surprise Harry and Bert. Later, Percy went back to the quarry. He rolled up behind Harry and Bert, took an extra big puff and blew as loudly as he could. Harry and Bert were surprised. I told you my whistle is as good as your silly old honky horns, laughed Percy. Now that he had a super loud whistle, Percy couldn't wait to use it again. When he saw Thomas in the sidings, he took a big puff and blew as loud as he could. Thomas was cross. That wasn't funny, he sniffed. But Percy didn't notice. He was too busy having fun. Percy saw Bertie the bus. He took another big puff and blew. Bertie skidded all over the road. Percy, he cried crossly. He had nearly caused an accident, but Percy had already chuffed away. That evening, Thomas told Percy to stop surprising his friends. You made Bertie skid across the road and my trucks got damaged, said Thomas. Percy was sorry. I won't do it again, he waved. I promise. But the next day, Percy was bringing the milk train from the dairy. I wish I could have one more loud whistle, he said to himself. He couldn't see any people or engines. But there was something else Percy couldn't see. Trevor the traction engine was taking food to the farm animals. With snow on the ground, they couldn't find any grass to eat. Percy took his biggest puff of all and blew. Trevor was so surprised his trailer bumped into a pile of logs. A log fell off and rolled down the hill. Snow stuck to the log. It turned into a snowball. The snowball got bigger and bigger. Percy was enjoying himself until he saw the snowball. cried Percy. Luckily, no one was hurt, but his driver was cross. Now I will have to go for help, he said. Percy waited in the cold. His funnel was freezing and his axles were shivering. At last, Thomas arrived with the fat controller. He was very cross indeed. 
Whistles are for safety, he told Percy, not for playing games. You must only use your whistle when the time is right. Yes, sir, shivered Percy, and he promised to use his whistle properly from now on. The next day, Percy was a very quiet engine indeed. He didn't use his whistle once. But as Percy came out of the tunnel, he gasped. A big snowdrift had slipped onto the tracks. Percy heard Thomas. He was heading straight for the snowdrift. If he did not stop in time, he would have an accident. I must warn him, cried Percy. Percy took the biggest puff he had ever taken and he blew the loudest whistle he had ever blown. Something must be wrong, cried Thomas, and he applied his brakes just in time. Cinders and ashes, he gasped. Thank you, Percy. That evening, the fat controller came to the sheds. Well, John Percy, he boomed. You blew your whistle at the right time and saved Thomas from an accident. You are a really useful engine and a safe one. Percy was so proud his firebox tingled. Percy uses his whistle safely now and all his friends are glad to see him. The island of Sodor is surrounded by beautiful blue sea. It has fields of green and sandy yellow beaches. There are rivers, streams and lots of trees where the birds sing. There are windmills and a coal mine and docks where visitors to the island arrive. The island also has lots and lots of railway lines. Who's that? puffing down the track. It's Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the island of Sodor. The island of Sodor is a busy, bustling place. There is always lots for the engines to do. One morning, Thomas was shunting trucks in the yard when the fat controller came to see him. The fishermen have caught their biggest catch of fish ever. Thomas, you must help Arthur take them to the docks. Thomas was fed up. He didn't like the smell of fish. And when he got to the fishing village, there were lots of trucks, all stacked full of fish. Thomas had never seen so many fish. Phew, he puffed. What a horrible smell. Then Arthur arrived. Arthur warned Thomas that the route to Brendam Docks was bumpy. Only take five trucks at a time, said Arthur, and go slow and steady. Arthur carefully collected five trucks, then he puffed slowly out of the harbour yard. Thomas looked at all the fish trucks. He didn't want to go slow and steady. He wanted to get his smelly job over with. So Thomas shunted all of the trucks into a long line. And he puffed out of the village. The trucks were heavy and smelly, but Thomas was pleased his job would soon be over. But then the troublesome trucks decided to have some fun. 
The trucks wiggled and they giggled. <laughs> they made Thomas's journey very bumpy. Some of the fish were shaken loose. Yuck! Thomas gasped. I wish I'd have taken fewer trucks. Thomas puffed hard. He pushed the long line of trucks up the hill. He started to puff down the other side. Thomas tried to go slowly, but the trucks wanted to go faster. On, 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 they cheered. Thomas went faster and faster. Cinders and ashes, Thomas cried. Salty was at the bottom of the hill. He was waiting for a signal. He didn't know Thomas was coming down the hill. Thomas was out of control. Thomas braked as hard as he could. But the fish trucks were too heavy. Oops, said Thomas. Sorry. Salty was covered in fish. Never mind me, Artie, said Salty. The smell reminds me of the sea. Thomas's driver telephoned for help. And soon Harvey was clearing the tracks. Thomas wondered what the fat controller would say. He found out soon enough. You have caused confusion and delay, said the fat controller sternly. You must learn to be more safe. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir, Thomas puffed sadly. This time, Thomas shunted only five trucks together. He took a deep breath and chuffed away. Thomas puffed through the countryside. I will get to the docks on time, he cried, but the troublesome trucks were up to some of their old tricks. Hold back, they giggled, but this time there were only five trucks. Thomas biffed and bashed and bumped them, and the trucks weren't troublesome anymore. As soon as he delivered the first trucks, Thomas went back to collect the next five. His coupling smelled of kippers and his cabin smelled of cod, but he was working so hard he forgot all about the smell. At last he had just one more load to take. But it was nearly time for the ship to leave. Thomas raced as fast as he could. His axles ached and his buffers were bashed, but he got to the docks just in time. Thomas was very happy to say goodbye to the fish. Then the fat controller came to see Thomas. I know you don't like the smell of fish, but you have worked very hard, the fat controller said. You really are a useful engine. Thomas was proud, but he still had the smell of fish in his funnel and he couldn't wait to be clean. So he puffed off to the washdown. Arthur and Salty were already there. Getting clean is lovely, puffed Arthur. Best part of the day, said Salty. Especially when you smell of fish, said Thomas.
The island of Sodor is surrounded by beautiful blue sea. It has fields of green and sandy yellow beaches. There are rivers, streams and lots of trees where the birds sing. There are windmills and a coal mine and docks where visitors to the island arrive. The island also has lots and lots of railway lines. Who's that puffing down the track? It's Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the island of Sodor. It was springtime on the island of Sodor. The sun was shining and the birds were singing. All the engines loved this time of the year. Emily thought the island had never looked more beautiful. But that night, there was a big and blustery storm. High winds swept across the island. Trees were blown down. A water tower fell over. And the roof blew right off Farmer McCall's barn. Emily was very pleased to be safe and warm in her cosy shed. She could hear the wind outside. But the next morning, Emily could not believe her eyes. The storm had made a terrible mess. Farmer McCall was looking at the damaged barn. The baby calves will be cold at night. I must fix the roof right away. But Farmer McCall didn't have any timber for the roof. So he telephoned the fat controller. The fat controller came to see Emily. The storm blew the roof off Farmer McCall's barn, he said. You must take some timber so it can be fixed. Yes, sir said Emily. Emily steamed over to the timber yards. She buffered up to the timber wagon and raced off to Farmer McCall's as fast as she could. But the storm had caused lots of damage to the lines. Workmen and lorries were clearing branches and rocks from the tracks. Emily wanted to go quickly, but she couldn't go at all. Bother, said Emily crossly. Trevor and the workmen were trying to move the tree, but moving it was taking a long time. Hurry up, Emily puffed impatiently. You must work harder. And she blew her whistle. <whistles> Trevor was working as hard as he could. At last, he pulled the tree off the track. But Emily didn't say thank you to Trevor. All she said was, about time. Every time she came across workmen clearing the track, she blew her whistle and wished steam. This made the workmen cross. But Emily thought it made them work harder. Then Emily came across a fallen water tower. It had crashed onto her line. Oh, no, she cried. Elizabeth was helping the workmen push the tower off the track. The tower was very heavy. Emily decided to boss Elizabeth too. Hurry up, she wished. And she blew her whistle as loud as she could. Not if you ask like that, sniffed Elizabeth crossly. I've got an urgent delivery, said Emily. But Elizabeth didn't listen. 
she simply went back to work. Emily blew her whistle again, but the more she blew her whistle, the slower Elizabeth seemed to go. Emily thought she would never get to Farmer McColl's. The skies were darkening and night was on its way. Thomas arrived bringing more supplies. Hello, Thomas tooted. Emily complained about Elizabeth. She won't do a thing I tell her. That's because you're a big bossy boiler, laughed Thomas. You should try asking nicely for a change. Emily didn't like being called the bossy boiler, and she didn't want to ask nicely. But it would be night time soon, and the baby calf still didn't have a roof over their heads. So Emily took a deep breath. I'm sorry I was rude, but can you help me get this timber to Farmer McColl's? Please, it's to help the baby calves. Elizabeth smiled. Why, certainly, she puffed. I'll get your track cleared in no time. Emily was surprised. Thomas was right. Asking nicely was just like magic. Elizabeth pushed with all her puff. The tower was heavy, but with a mighty heave, the track was clear. Thank you, cried Emily, and she steamed on as fast as she could. It was nearly bedtime. Emily knew the baby calves would be getting cold. So whenever there was something on the track, she took a deep breath and said, please and thank you. At last, Emily arrived at Farmer McColl's. And the timber was quickly unloaded. The barn was soon repaired and the baby calves snuggled down on a nice soft hay. Thank you, Emily, said Farmer McCull. The calves will be nice and warm now. Emily was pleased. She'd arrived on time. Asking nicely was all she'd had to do. The island of Sodor is surrounded by beautiful blue sea. It has fields of green and sandy yellow beaches. There are rivers, streams, and lots of trees where the birds sing. There are windmills and a coal mine, and docks where visitors to the island arrive. The island also has lots and lots of railway lines. Who's that puffing down the track? It's Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the island of Sodor. It was a glorious summer day on the island of Sodor. Toby was collecting milk from the dairy. James was pulling passengers to Brendam Docks and Thomas was taking some workmen to work. They were building a new station. Every day, Thomas had to take the workmen there and bring them home again. I can't wait for the grand opening, he told Annie and Clarabelle excitedly. There's going to be flags and a big band. On the way to the new station, there was a difficult bend in the track. Thomas didn't like it at all. He was worried about the bend, but his good friends Annie and Clarabel were there to help him. Slow down, they sang out. Slow down and puff with care. So Thomas did slow down and he puffed with care. 
Thank you, Thomas Puff to Annie and Clarabel. I couldn't have done it without you. Thomas arrived safely at the station. The fat controller was waiting for him. Today, Annie and Clarabel are to go for their refit, he told Thomas. You must take them to the workshops straight away. But how will I take the workmen home? asked Thomas. You can use ordinary coaches instead, said the fat controller. Yes, sir, said Thomas, and he puffed away to the workshop. Thomas said goodbye to Annie and Clarabel. He was sad. I don't know how I'll manage the difficult pen without you, he told his friends. The next day, Thomas puffed to the coach yard. He was still thinking about the difficult pen. Thomas went too fast and gave the coaches a mighty biff. The carriages rolled along the line and bumped into James. Watch what you're doing! James snorted. Sorry, Thomas puffed. Thomas was missing Annie and Clarabel. He would never have biffed into them. Soon Thomas was on his way to pick up the workers at the new station. Difficult bend, difficult bend, he puffed nervously. The difficult bend came nearer and nearer. Thomas was supposed to slow down, but he wanted to get past the bend quickly. So Thomas went faster and faster. The carriages rattled and shook. Soon be over, soon be over, Thomas said to himself. And it soon was. Luckily, no one was hurt. But Thomas felt sadder than ever. Harvey arrived to help clear up the mess. Harvey didn't like seeing Thomas so unhappy. I can't go round the difficult bend, Thomas wished sadly. I'm not a useful engine without Annie and Clarabel. Hmm. You are a really useful engine, said Harvey, and a jolly good friend. And he puffed away. Thomas trundled slowly back to Tidmouth Sheds. He was very sad. He wanted to be back with Annie and Clarabel. Suddenly, Thomas saw a line of troublesome trucks rushing towards him. They had come uncoupled from Edward. Cinders and ashes, cried Thomas. The trucks are heading for the new station. I must warn the station master. So he raced after them. The troublesome trucks clattered along the track. Thomas was determined to save the new station, so he dashed after the runaway trucks. Thomas went faster and faster. He raced past the trucks, but he was nearly at the difficult bend. Thomas wanted to go fast, but he knew he couldn't. Slow down, said Thomas to himself. Slow down and puff with care. Thomas applied his brakes. He slowed down and puffed very carefully. He made it round a difficult bend all by himself. I've done it, he tooted. But so did the runaway trucks. Thomas puffed as fast as he could. and he raced into the station, just in time. Runaway trucks are coming, he cried. You must change the points. The signalman quickly changed the points. The troublesome trucks hurtled into a siding. They biffed and bashed the buffers. But the station was safe. 
The next day, Thomas was back with Annie and Clarabel. They were going to the grand opening of the new station. They chuffed along happily together, and when they came to the difficult bend, Thomas slowed down and puffed with care. The difficult bend wasn't difficult anymore. The grand opening was a great success, and the new station looked wonderful. The fat controller came to see Thomas. You have shaved my new station, he said. You are a very brave and useful engine. Thank you, sir, said Thomas. He was so proud it made his firebox glow. The island of Sodor is surrounded by beautiful blue sea. It has fields of green and sandy yellow beaches. There are rivers, streams, and lots of trees where the birds sing. There are windmills and a coal mine, and docks where visitors to the island arrive. The island also has lots and lots of railway lines. Who's that? puffing down the track. It's Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the island of Sodor. Gordon is big and blue and the fastest engine on all of Sodor. He loves pulling the express. Gordon thinks it makes him the most important engine on the island. One day, Gordon was pulling the express out of Brendan Docks. But Diesel was on the same line. Out of my way, sniffed Gordon. Express train coming through. Diesel had to back off. This made him cross. You steamies are old and clapped out, he sneered. When the fat controller realises this, you'll all be scrapped. Scrapped? Scoffed Gordon. Pa, I'm as fast as I ever was. And he chuffed proudly out of the docks. Gordon was speeding through the beautiful countryside. He was having a wonderful day. But then he heard a horrible squeaking noise. Gordon was upset. Squeaking could only mean one thing. Something was wrong. What if Diesel's right, he thought. What if the fat controller scraps me? Gordon squeaked sadly up the hill. The hill was steep and Gordon had to slow down. The slower he went, the quieter the squeak became. Gordon was delighted. Aha, he said. If I go slowly, no one will hear me squeak. And he chuffed slowly back to Tidmouth Sheds. That evening, the fat controller came to see Gordon. Tomorrow is a very special day, he said. I am taking some village children on a boat trip. You, Gordon, are to take us to Brendam Docks. The boat leaves at nine o'clock, so you must not be late. The next morning, Gordon waited for everyone to go. Then he puffed slowly away so no one would hear his squeak. Once out of the sheds, he started to pick up speed. His pistons pumped and his wheels spun, and he began to squeak again. Oh, my, said Gordon. Then he heard something even worse. It was a rattle. Oh, dear, oh, dear, he cried. 
Diesel was right. I am falling apart. What will the fat controller say? So, Gordon, slow down. Gordon crawled slowly into the station to collect the children. Gordon's boiler sank. If he went slowly, the children would miss their boat trip. But if he went quickly, the fat controller would hear his squeak and his rattle. He'd know Gordon was wearing out and send him to the scrapyard. With the children safely on board, Gordon pulled slowly out of the station. Gordon chuffed slowly through the countryside. He thought things were going well. But the fat controller was very cross. He spoke sternly to Gordon. What are you playing at, Gordon? He boomed. You must go quickly or the children will miss the boat, and that will never do. Yes, sir, said Gordon sadly. Remember, added the fat controller, you are the fastest engine on the island. This made Gordon feel proud. This might be my last trip, he said, but I'll get the children to their boat on time. His wheels turned faster, his pistons pumped harder. Must be on time, must be on time, he thought. Soon he began to squeak and rattle too. Then he heard another noise. A knocking noise. But Gordon didn't care. If this was his last trip, he was going to go as fast as he possibly could. Gordon squeaked and rattled and knocked all the way to Brendan Docks. Salty and Henry were surprised. They had never heard an engine make such awful noises. Sounds like another steamy ready for the scrapyard, sneered Diesel. But Gordon didn't care about Diesel. He had made good time and the children would catch their boat. I made it, he cried proudly. Thank you, Gordon, shouted the children happily. I knew you could do it, said the fat controller, but why haven't you been to the repair yard? The repair yard, gasped Gordon. You have been making lots of noises, said the fat controller. You need to have your engine looked at. So you're not going to scrap me, asked Gordon. Scrap Gordon, boomed the fat controller. The fastest engine on Sodor. Who would pull the express? Gordon beamed with pride. Gordon spent the next day having his pistons polished, his axles greased and his wheels well and truly oiled. At last, he didn't make any more funny noises. Gordon was as good as new. And he felt even better. The island of Sodor is surrounded by beautiful blue sea. It has fields of green and sandy yellow beaches. There are rivers, streams and lots of trees where the birds sing. There are windmills and a coal mine and docks where visitors to the island arrive. The island also has lots and lots of railway lines. Who's that puffing down the track? It's Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the island of Sodor. Winter was coming to the island of Sodor. The morning ground was covered in crisp white frost. Thomas and Emily were happily chuffing up and down the line. Thomas was enjoying pulling Annie and Clarabel. He thought he was doing a grand job. But 
But Emily had other ideas. She thought he could be doing an even grander job. So Emily decided to help Thomas by telling him what he was doing wrong. When she saw him puffing down the branch line, she cried out, Slow down, you are going too fast and bumping your passengers. Later, Emily saw Thomas by a bridge. He had stopped to take on water and was talking to some children. Stop talking to the children, said Emily. You are working and they will make you late. I'm never late, said Thomas huffily. There's always a first time, said Emily cheerfully. And she puffed away. Thomas was cross. He loved talking to children and thought Emily was being a big bossy buffers. Annie and Clarabelle agreed. I am never going to listen to Emily ever, ever again, said Thomas. So there. The next morning, a sleepy Thomas had to leave Tidmouth Sheds bright and early. He was to collect some trucks from the quarry and take them to the docks. Later that morning, the fat controller arrived with a new weather report. There is snow on the way. You must all have your snow ploughs fitted. Excuse me, sir, said Emily, but Thomas has already left for the quarry. Then you must find Thomas and tell him Sir Topham wants him to wear his snow plough. So Emily puffed away to get her snow plough fitted. The workmen fixed Emily's snow plough on in no time at all and she set off to find Thomas. Emily was very happy. She was looking forward to telling him what to do. Thomas was taking on water at Maithwaite Station. Emily puffed up in front of him. She blew her whistle, but Thomas didn't say hello. She just wants to boss me again, grouched Thomas. Thomas, she called. You must go and get your snowplow fitted. Thomas could hear what Emily was saying, but pretended he couldn't. He thought he was being very clever. So Emily tooted even louder again. You must go and get your snowplow fitted, she cried. Bother snowplows, said Thomas, and bother Emily anyway. The weather is perfectly fine. And he puffed away as fast as he could. Thomas delivered the trucks to the quarry, then set off to collect the cream from the dairy. Everything was going well. But soon the clear blue sky was eaten away by dark clouds. They look like snow clouds to me, said his driver, and he was right. Soon, big flakes of white snow began to fall. Then, the snow gathered into drifts and covered the tracks. Cinders and ashes, cried Thomas as his wheels began to slip. Snow fell all over the island. Emily cut safely through the drifts with her snowplow. Thomas will be in trouble now. Emily was right. Thomas was working harder and harder, but he had to go more and more slowly. We can't go on, said his driver. Thomas pulled to a slow, sad stop by a signal box. And his driver went for help. It snowed and snowed. Thomas felt very cold and twice as miserable. Then he heard the sound of an engine. Thomas was delighted until he saw who his rescuer was. It was Emily. 
I told you to go and get your snow plough, she said. Now look what has happened. Thomas was still cross. You should say sorry for bossing me about. I am sorry, said Emily. Sorry you didn't listen to me. Emily and Thomas chuffed into Tidmouth sheds. The fat controller was waiting. He did not look happy. Emily, you must take Thomas to get his snow plow fitted at once, said the fat controller sternly. You must learn to listen. Thomas felt bad. He didn't know it was the fat controller who wanted him to wear his snow plow. Emily felt bad too. She didn't like seeing Thomas in trouble. I'm sorry, sir, said Emily. I forgot to tell Thomas it was your idea. You mean I have two engines that don't listen, boomed the fat controller. Well, I never. Emily, you must take Thomas to get his snowplow fitted at once. Soon the work was finished and Thomas was wearing his snowplow. Thank you for owning up, said Thomas. You are a very good friend. That's all right, said Emily. You're a good friend too, but next time, if you want to stay out of trouble, just do what I say. Even Thomas had to laugh.